So it's getting pretty cold and wet outside. I've just walked the dog. Um, I've got a beer on the go, so I thought it's about time I started having a look at this polygraph. Um, so what we've got on the table, we're going to do a teardown on this today. Uh, we have uh, one of the DC driver amplifiers out of the polygraph, uh, which you've seen in the uh, previous videos. Um, this is the polygraph DC driver amplifier, so this section here. And this particular module is uh, the polygraph integrator. Um, this is model 7P10CD and the DC driver amplifier is 7DAEF. So let's uh, have a look at this and uh, see what it looks like on the inside. Right, so this uh, whole unit is based on a 19-inch um, rack, rack mount unit. Um, it's uh, all constructed out of um, sheet aluminium. Um, so you can see on the back here, uh, we've got uh, the two separate modules with um, the power cable which plugs into the distribution panel on the um, the actual rack unit. Uh, now at, at the moment there's uh, there's all sorts of screws missing out of this because I had to rob a lot of the stuff from the bits I've taken apart to sort of partly restore the the other polygraph that I've got so uh, there's a few bits missing sometimes a few odd screws somewhere so I think what we'll do I'll just separate these two units and we'll have a look at the uh, the DC driver amplifier first, um, and then we'll take a look at this uh, this integrator. So, as I mentioned on previous videos um, about the polygraph, the um, the preamps sit in this part, and they pass their signal through um, this connector here into the DC driver amplifier. This is the bit that drives the pens, um, so it takes the um, sort of pre-amplified signal and, and beefs it up to um, to the sort of uh, power required to actually make the pens move backwards and forwards. So we'll um, just take this apart. So if we just take a closer look at the um, amplifier, we have um, a button here which is titled driver cal, um, 100 millivolt standard equals two centimeters. The button next to it is polarity and that has um, down cal, up cal, uh, use and use so presumably you can you put this into the, you, you want to calibrate the upper position uh, you put it into up cal press the button and presumably the pen would move to um, two centimeters I would have, I would expect um, and then you can just flick it on to use when you actually want to use it uh, next button across is half amp high frequency I wonder whether that means half amplitude high frequency um, the markings on here are 0 0.1, 0 0.5, 3, 15, 35, 75. And then there's another set of um, marks on here in red, which refer to driver only. Um, and they are 0.5 kilohertz, 3 kilohertz, and 40 kilohertz. So I think this um, is possibly some kind of filter um, to filter out. It's probably a, a low pass filter, um, I would imagine. Um, probably be a good way to get rid of uh, noise if you're looking at, um, at particularly um, slow moving signals and you've got a lot of high frequency noise in you could uh, tune tune that out and, uh, and bring the um, and put a low pass filter so only the low frequencies get through um, exactly what the numbers are mean I, I don't really know to be honest um, next bit along we have uh, two LEDs so we've got minus 12 volts and plus 12 volts Next along we have a power switch, so we have off, push, standby and on, so when that's in standby you can't turn it to off unless you um, push it in and turn, so uh, presumably you can have this off completely um, and in a sort of a, a standby, what that uh, is there for really, I, I'm not sure the difference between off and standby. Um, maybe there's some kind of warm-up time required on these. Um, I don't know. Uh, there's no valves or anything in this in this equipment. It's all um, silicon, so not entirely sure on that. Um, and then you have on. Uh, down at the bottom here we have uh, input J1 and J2. Um, I wonder whether this is like an auxiliary input um, in addition to in addition to this here. I'm not entirely sure on that one. Um, 
this control knob here is driver sensitivity and that goes between 0 and 8 if I I believe yeah 8 is probably under the the locking bit which is literally just a, a small knurled allen head bolt machine screw which allows you to when it's loose allows you to turn it and then if you screw this in it, it pinches the wheel very slightly so it locks it in quite a nice solution that um, next along we have a uh, baseline position um, so uh, again not entirely sure this is probably for zeroing out the the pen on the paper um, to make it uh, the sort of zero position if it's if it's offset at all so you probably tune out that now interestingly on this uh, if I just release this off there is actually um, a fine adjustment on this you can feel there's actually um, two two pots on this um, there's one here you can hear it hitting the um, the end limits there and then if you push a bit harder you can actually turn it round all the way so there is actually some fine adjustment in there which is nice um, next along we have a 50 Hertz filter in and out um, notice that's um, a little tagged on a uh, little aluminium cover there I would imagine that says 60 Hertz underneath it um, and 60 Hertz would be the um, what it would be for the American or 60 Hertz mains users um, obviously this being an American device it would have uh, naturally had 60 Hertz on here originally and they've produced an international version which has 50 and then just tagged on a little a little uh, cover there to uh, cover up the 60 Hertz filter writing so that's either on or off so it would allow you to filter out any mains hum um, and here we have uh, some additional um, jack sockets we have J6A out J5 in J7 out and J6 out these are 3.5 millimeter um, jack plugs um, and here we have a um, is it two and a half millimeter banana uh, or two millimeter I can't remember off the top of my head but that's a banana banana plug socket even and if we take a look around the back, uh, we've got the cable coming in. This is uh, this supplies all the power. Uh, we've got a couple of fuses, uh, one amp and one amp. Oh, it's, uh, oh, I see. We've got plus and minus. So that's they've got a a, um, a fuse on the plus and minus supplies. Uh, we have a high low switch. Yeah, I don't know what that does. Um, we have in and out. Now, uh, when this is actually installed in the, the actual rack, the connection down to the pens is actually through these, um, these uh, sockets here. Um, so these are the actual, the actual output. And we have some adjustment uh, pots here, one called Damp, um, BLP, and Sense. So uh, that's dampening of some description, BLP, no idea on that one. Um, sends well, it's probably sensitivity. Um, at a guess, uh, we've got some guarantee void if seal broken stickers here. If I just turn this over, you can see underneath that this has actually been opened in the past, and that's dated June 1973. Okay, well, it's about time I took a screwdriver to it. So the, the whole thing is just secured with one small screw at the back here. Um, and then the cover slides off. So this is just a uh, pressed and formed aluminium sheet. Okay, so in here we've got some analog goodness. Um, we have, uh, these are either um, LM310 uh, voltage followers or LM uh, 741 op amps. Um, notice a lot of these resistors in here are 1%. Um, the board is uh, it's all through hole, obviously, back here's the 1970s. Um, 
It's only single sided. We've got um, these are uh, look like RC fil filters. They actually have a symbol on there of a filter and a capacitor, and they're called Quench Art. We've got this device here um, that is labelled G1C 100 and then 201. Uh, what that is, I have no idea. There's nothing comes up on Google on that one, uh, but yeah, it could well just be a, uh, a power amplifier. So if we look at this from the other direction, you can see the uh, the wafer switches in the front here. Um, notice every single solder point has a, um, a red mark on it. Um, every single one, no matter where it is. Every, every point that's been soldered has a red mark on it. So there's obviously been somebody going through this and checking. No, I can't lift this board out because everything's just soldered in and it, it won't come out. So I'm just going to flip this over and uh, we'll take off the, the bottom panel. Right, so this is looking in from underneath. Um, again, on the PCB, you can see, um, well, hopefully you can see that on uh, screen. Let's zoom in a little bit. You can see that every single solder point has been um, marked with red red pen. Oh, there's two that haven't, actually. Um, so, yeah, this has been checked very, very thoroughly by somebody. The, uh, the wafer switches, that's the power switch that has the, the push on off control in it. This one here is the back of the high uh, frequency uh, knob, adjustment knob. So we've got loads of capacitors and, and stuff on there. And the next one along is the sensitivity. No, it isn't. It's, it's the polarity. Um, so yeah, that one's a bit more basic. And then we've got two pots. On the bottom, one is for sensitivity and one is for the um, the baseline position. And you can just be able to see in there the two two pots on on the back of each other there uh, for that uh, sort of two-stage fine control. And looking at the back of the unit now, uh, we have those uh, those trim pots. Um, the Three and a half millimeter connectors, switch, um, the two fuse holders, and the power connections coming in. Right, well, there's not really much more to see on that, to be honest. Um, so let's put that to one side and we'll have a look at the integrator. Right, let's uh, take a look at the integrator then. Um, it seems to be divided into two sections we have uh, signal conditioning and integrator um, on the Left hand side here we have um, in, presumably that's the input to it. Uh, linear range is minus 1.5 to plus 1.5, so three volt peak to peak. Uh, we have a, a line filter um, in and out, so uh, presumably this would be um, made specifically for um, international markets where it's, uh, it's 50 hertz or there's, there'll be a 60 hertz model as well, I would expect. Um, we have a DC BAL, that would probably be DC balance um, scale here. Um, we have a, just under it we have a scale expanse, so there's obviously a, a fine and coarse view that you can show on this. Um, we have uh, the balance control which is um, a nice uh, 10, turn, 10 turn pot. Now it's actually missing the, um, the black knob cover off this, so it's actually a little bit difficult to, uh, to turn it at the moment um, with a nice locking locking section there and you can see there just in the center that tells you the um, the number of hundreds that you've advanced so every time this goes past zero it advances it round um, underneath that we have a coupling which is uh, labeled DC AC slow and AC fast um, and underneath that, um, presumably, um, is the same thing, just in a, a different meaning. Um, we have uh, RESP, um, EEG, and EMG. Um, I would have thought RESP would be uh, respiration, you know, some kind of breathing measurement. EEG is um, uh, electroencephalogram. EMG electromyogram, which apparently is uh, the measurement of uh, muscles. 
Uh, so next across here we have uh, rectification. Um, notice we've got, um, even though there's actually only four positions on the switch, there's, there's actually eight symbols on it. Um, so we have um, half wave negative, half wave positive, uh, full and non. Um, and then underneath there's just a little pictorial representation of what that actually means. Um, underneath that, we have a threshold control and an output. And over on the integrator section, we have um, a button there called manual override. I'm not sure what that, that's for. Uh, we have uh, reset mode, and that has EXT, which is presumably external, uh, signal zero cross, integrator amplitude, and then time. Um, and that is available in uh, 1, 10, and 60 seconds. So presumably when it's on, when it's on 10, um, every 10 seconds the integrator resets to zero. The next one along is uh, sensitivity. This is uh, quite a number of uh, um, positions on this switch. Um, it goes from 750 um, all the way through to 1. So there's, um, and just below that we have output display, uh, mark and ramp. Again, not sure what that's for. Um, and then just in the middle here you have a hold uh, switch, which is either cal or use. Um, now interestingly this switch is actually, it's momentary this way, and then latching that way, which is, uh, which is nice. But, uh, you know, switches that do that are probably quite hard to find. And then just on the right there we have um, out. Right, so uh, let's open this up and uh, see what is on the inside. But before I do that, I'd better show you the back. Um, we have um, drift adjustment, which is another uh, pot that can be adjusted, drift test dead zone adjustment and X reset. So uh, presumably that is the option that's on the front, which is uh, reset mode external. You can actually um, plug something in the back here. Okay, there's no actual screw on this one. There's um, a little wire tag um, securing the top and bottom covers. Um, interestingly, the seal has not been broken. It's, uh, it's completely sealed and dated January 1981. Right, let's break the seal on this and see what's been hidden away for the last 34 years. Tape here. Awesome. Um, so we have a similar type of PCB layout, etc. Um, you can tell that it's certainly from the same area. Obviously, we have. Uh, a nice looking uh, burr brown package there um, that has a number of 3292-8 slash 14 let's see what that is no idea um, Google comes up with nothing absolutely nothing I, mean, I really do mean nothing I guess I could <laughs> I could take a, a wild stab in the dark and say it's an integrator um, but yeah, there's obviously some uh, some analog goodness going in that. I'm not quite sure. It seems to be a plastic package on the top of a PCB, which is then mounted to the main board. So uh, we'll have a look, closer look at that in a moment. So we have uh, lots more of those um, LM741 uh, op amps. Uh, we have some ICs over here. So that is a um, divide by 12 and binary counter. Um, so there's obviously a little bit of digital stuff going on in here. Uh, possibly that's for doing the 
Uh, the timing, the uh, the one ten sixty seconds thing. If we look in from the other direction, uh, notice they don't have wafer. Well, they are wafer switches, but they're enclosed type. A little bit more modern. Um, we've got a nice spectral ten turn pot. Um, that is the back of the meter, just there. Um, we have a, um, a large wafer switch for the um, for that multi position. Adjustment on the front. Okay, let's just have a quick look at from the bottom. So again, similar to the other PCB, it's all um, hand-drawn traces and uh, all the solder points again have been um, marked with a, a, a marker. Um, wow, look at that switch. Now that's, that's a switch. <laughs> let's have a close look at that. So this is the switch that has um, latching in one direction and momentary in the other. So you can see the uh, the actual shaft that's uh, that moves um, pushes a small little roller, which opens and closes the switches on either side. So one side latches and one side is momentary. Beautiful. Right, I'm just going to try and take out this um, this burr brown um, thing here. Um, I think it's actually in a socket. There we go. So it's uh, some kind of hybrid hybrid module. It has on the connections X, 1, 2 and Y uh, but there's only one and two. They've got V plus, com, v, v minus, out, and Z, I think. Sounds very, very solid in there. So there probably isn't much chance of actually getting into that to look inside. Who knows? Any ideas, anybody? Right, I've just done a bit more googling on that, and I wonder whether it's actually a uh, an op amp of some description. Um, I can't get uh, a match on the full part number there, but uh, there is some stuff similar, Burr Brown uh, branded with three two nine two, which is which is uh, described as an op amp, but I can't find any any kind of data sheet or anything. Okay, everybody, um, there's not really much more to see on this now, so I'm going to uh, call it quits there. Uh, I'm going to continue to strip this down. Um, unfortunately, I can't keep all of this stuff. Uh, there's just far too much of it. And uh, don't forget, I do have a complete polygraph um, system um, still in my container, so I do still have that to play with. Um, and I'll certainly be making videos on that. Um, There'll be a few more of these modules that I'll be um, doing teardowns on. Um, there's a few different types, uh, so I will um, feature all of those. Um, there'll be a few other random things from the, the polygraph uh, things as well, like um, this uh, grass mechanical timer, which was plugged into one of the chart recorders. Um, the power supplies as well, they might prove interesting. And certainly the um, pen, uh, driver, um, the actual mechanical pens, um, that should prove interesting as well. So I hope you found this interesting. Um, if you've got anything to say, please leave it in the comments. Um, I'd be interested to see if anybody's got any thoughts on what's actually in here. Um, if you uh, if you liked it, give it a thumbs up. Um, if you're not subscribed, then I suggest you subscribe. Right, thanks for watching everybody, and I'll see you on the next video. Bye for now.